Pool is a very well known game played both professionally and for fun in our world today. It is a game that requires the perfect balance between strategy and skill along with your full attention and focus to master the game. There are many variants of the game, but the main objective behind the game is that you need to strike the cue ball with a cue to strike another ball to try and pot that ball into one of the six pockets on the corners and sides of the table. By simply understanding this concept, you can see how physics has a very important role to understanding how and why certain techniques work, which is what I will be focusing on in this video. Not only will you leave the video understanding more about the mechanics of the game, but you will also be able to adopt some of the techniques you will learn to become a better and smarter player. The game consists of sets of striped and solid balls, as well as a black 8 ball and a white cue ball. At the start of the game, all balls except the cue ball are racked up in a triangular formation at one side of the table, with the black 8 being in the center. The white cue ball is placed at the opposite end of the table anywhere behind the second dime. The cue ball is then driven into the rest of the balls and attempts to pot a set of either striped or solid balls. Once a ball is potted, the set that the ball belongs to, either striped or solid, will be the set that the person who scored it will attempt to pot for the rest of the game. If the player succeeds in potting one of his balls, he will continue his turn to pot another one of his balls. However, if he fails, his turn ends and the other player starts his turn. Once one of the players has potted all their balls, they then have the opportunity to pot the black 8 ball. The player must call which pocket he or she will pot the 8 ball in, and they must pot it in that pocket to win the game. Some rules and violations include If you fail to hit one of your balls with the cue ball If you hit one of your opponent's ball as the first ball the cue ball hits If you sink one of your opponent's balls if you illegally hit the black 8 ball as the first ball the cue ball hits. If you touch any ball. If you take your turn before the ball stops moving. If you pot the cue ball. If any ball goes off the table including solid, striped or the cue ball. The game is automatically lost when the 8 ball is sunken before finishing your balls or sunken in the pocket that you didn't call or when the cue ball is sunken when trying to pot the 8 ball. Any of the fouls mentioned above will result in a ball in hand for the other player, where they are allowed to move the cue ball anywhere across the table. Physics has a very important role in understanding the basics of how the game works. Let's look at this example. Here I hit the cue ball to try and score the one ball, but how exactly do I determine where each ball is going to go after impact? Let's look at a small animation. Here I hit the cue ball again to score the one ball. Let's take a closer look at what happens. When the two balls are in contact, the angle in which they contact will determine the direction of both balls. The object ball will travel in a line passing through the centers of both balls when in contact, as well as the contact point of both balls. To find the direction of the cue ball on the other hand, we take the common tangent between both balls, meaning this line passes through only the contact point. A parallel line is drawn through the center of the cue ball, and that will be its direction. In case you haven't noticed, this means that the object ball and the cue ball will travel exactly 90 degrees apart from each other. This is known as the 90 degree rule. Spin is a very important technique used by many players. It allows us to manipulate the trajectory of the cue ball after impact. This allows us to position the cue ball anywhere you want on the table for an easy next shot if you manage to make one of your balls. There are five main types of spins. Hitting in the center will just cause the cue ball to follow the path we discussed previously. Hitting it just below center, however, will result in a stun shot where the cue ball will remain in its place after impact. Next we have the draw shot or backspin where the cue ball will move back after impact. Then the follow shot or top spin where the cue ball will move forward after impact. Finally, the right and left English spins, which will be discussed further on in the video. These techniques are used by many advanced players and it greatly helps them in scoring multiple balls in one turn to have a much higher chance of winning. The stun shot allows the player to stop the cue ball in its place after impact. This can be beneficial where the next shot follows a path where the cue ball stops, making the next shot an easy shot. Let's look at the short animation to see how this works. Imagine the situation from the side view. 
the cue ball is hit just below center causing it to slide with linear velocity rather than roll with angular velocity. When it finally reaches the object ball in its sliding motion it will stop in its place as there is no extra spin or force causing it to move. In this example I use stun shot to stop the ball when potting the three ball. This allows me to have an easy shot on the following two ball. The draw shot or backspin shot allows the player to move the cue ball back after impact. This can be useful to position the cue ball in a place where it is aligned with the object ball and the pocket, making an easy next shot. Let's look at the short animation to see how it works. Again, imagining this from the side view, we hit the cue ball towards the bottom. This causes the cue ball to move forward while spinning backwards. This means that once the two balls collide, the backward spin on the cue ball will cause it to move back. In this example, I use a draw shot while putting the 4 ball. As you can see, it is very important to chalk your cue before attempting this, as there is a very high chance of a miscue or an illegal shot. I then attempt the draw shot to move the cue ball back to align it with the 5 ball, making an easy following shot. Unfortunately, I scratch and post the cue ball causing a foul. The follow shot or topspin shot allows the cue ball to move forward after impact. This is useful as it can cause the cue ball to align with another one of your balls, making the following shot much easier. Let's also look at the short animation to see how it works. We are also imagining this from the side view. We hit the cue ball near the top. This will give the cue ball a forward spin while it is moving forward, which means that once the two balls collide, the forward spin on the ball will make it move forward. In this example here, I use topspin when hitting the 3 ball, as to nicely position my cue ball next to the rail for a clear shot on the 2. The left and right English or spin require a bit more focus on their use, as it mostly depends on the balls ricocheting off the cushions of the table or off other balls. Side spin increases or decreases the angle at which the ball ricochets off another ball or cushion. As we can see in this animation, to execute the right and left spin, we hit on the sides of the cue ball, making the spin clockwise or anti-clockwise while moving forward. Let's take a look at how a spinning cue ball collides with a stationary object ball. This time we are imagining the situation from the top. When we hit the cue ball on the right, it will gain an anti-clockwise spin. When it collides with the one ball, the one ball will gain an opposite direction of spin, thus clockwise. The spin on both balls will cause them to move in a direction slightly towards the direction of the spin. Now let's see how a spinning ball would react to the rail. If the ball was hit with the right spin, making the spin anti-clockwise, this means that when you hit the rail, it would bounce off to a much larger angle to the right, due to the right spin. In this example, I attempt to score the three ball, then go for the two ball. I don't use any sort of spin, so as you can see, the cue ball ended up in a difficult position for me to make that shot. When looking at the same example, however applying some right spin, I was able to get the cue ball to bounce off the rail to the right direction to make a really easy shot on the two ball. In conclusion, I hope this video had a great impact on your code skills and understanding how physics has a very important role not only in understanding the basics of the game, but as well as mastering and perfecting the game. I would like to thank uh, the people who have supported me in this video, starting from my brother, who has helped me in some general information and tips on the video, as well as my supervisor Mr. Tabu, and some other people such as Mr. Yusuf Qasim, Mr. Reem Dukhmaq, my parents, as well as my aunt and uncle who have provided me with the camera and microphone needed to create the video. This has been a great experience and an even greater journey. Thank you.